this is just for you guys today. Um, oh, here we go. Now it's working. Excellent. Uh, so I knew that's how it worked. Uh, but anyway, uh, so I kind of laid out the basic concept of the Sumonanaki, which is uh, creating this constant tension of trying to pull them towards the Tumonanaki, which they then have to react off of. And really, the rest of the semester, so today, this technique and, and Wednesday, will be uh, options when they react to that pressure. Um, the way I like to think of it, and actually, we were just talking about this moments ago, uh, is the, by pulling them in toward the Tumonanaki, sort of in perpetuity, I'm sort of creating like a rubber band that's trying to like snap close. So for them to not get flipped over their head, they're basically taking, you know, you picture the rubber band here, and they're taking it and they're stretching it out, stretching it out, stretching it out, right? So what that means, guys, is that if I just relocate where the rubber band is located, so in this instance right now, the rubber band would be in their hips and their uh, collar and sleeve. If I can relocate where part of that rubber band is located, let's say the hips, and I can bring it to a different point, I can switch that trajectory. I can use their own resistance against that resistance against that. That's complicated. So uh, the, one of the easiest transitions from here, because one of the most common things that they will do is if I have him here and I pull him in, he's going to pull away, right? Exactly. He's going to start walking back. It's a pretty simple common response, right? So we're going to utilize this to our advantage. And if we really try to force the tomorrow now, this is the key, guys. People will say things like, we're going to fake. We're going to bait them with this. Like, do not bait. Throw them over their fucking head. And if they stop you, then do this other stuff. But if they don't stop you, throw them over their head, man. Like, do it. But I have John. I'm trying to throw him over my head. He does not want He's walking backwards. So what I'm going to do is pivot toward the foot on the side of the sleeve here. I'm going to drop the foot on that hip, come here, catch, and chop the head. And get myself a nice little single sweep. Very simple. Mm -hmm. And just to show that, like, without any of the other nuances, it's good. Can I get you to stand right in front of me? Right? And I just want you to bless you. Bless you. So I was here. And just imagine I had grips. I'm dropping this, I'm kind of pivoting on my side. Dropping this leg between his feet, bringing myself towards this angle so I can hook this foot and chop at this one. If I can, I'll rotate this foot so that instead of my toes being outside, my toes will be inside. And then I'm going to take over with this now. Here's the thing I want you guys to think about. If I try to chop this bottom leg right now, it's kind of awkward. What I need is to push his weight back enough that I can lift his ankle off the floor. So it's not a chop, guys, it's a lift. Anytime you're doing any sort of sickle sweep kind of thing, it's, it's never really a chop, it's a lift off the mat. Furthermore, if I can get him, so now I'll get my grips, he starts pulling away. If I can get him to keep pulling away, pull it away. I get a really nice, powerful sweep off of that. It's very close. Um, so, pretty straightforward on that one, right? Alternatively, uh, I'll show one other sort of thing you can do from here. And really, it's just anything that involves them going backwards is a viable option. But another option is I'm pulling in, he starts pulling away, he starts pulling away, is I'm going to come up and get right up on top. But basically, him walking backwards is what's facilitating it, right? Again, nothing too fancy, it's just taking advantage of basic concepts. If he pulls away, it's easy to push him back. If he pulls forward, pushes forward. Which again, now we play that in reverse. I'm here. He starts pulling, like I pull him in, he pulls away. I'm throwing in. He's like, no way. Bam. The second he unleashes, he releases that tension. The second he stops trying to pull away, you got a bunch of these fights. I'll grab you, Mike, so this time you feel that. It's all, again, pretty simple mechanically, but a matter of applying the principle. So again, I'm in the collar and sleeve, I'm trying to I'm pull him in, he starts walking back, he's walking back. So say so you're walking backwards. Right. From here, find this position, and then I'm gonna push his hip back and lift his foot up. From here, just come up on top and use it up in a half guard. That's one. Two. From here. You start walking backwards, right? I'm going to disengage everything, catch his ankle, punch, and pull his heel up. So same 
uncomfortable is the foot on the hip, guys, pushing him back, but this time it's my collar punching his chest back to distribute his weight back. And then, and be careful with this wood, if he starts pulling back, boom, I'm trying to go for this, he's like, no way, he releases, here we go. It's right there. The instinct that you guys really want to develop, if you really want to get strong at this collar and sleeve sort of kimonyagi thing, is to perpetually be threatening the kimonyagi. The second they release resistance, you're trying to take them over. If every time they release resistance, you almost take them over, they have to never release resistance, which is going to just funnel them right down the path of the counter for that. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. Actually, let's partner up with that. One, two, three.